Good evening, passengers. This is the pre-boarding announcement for your flight. We are now inviting guests to take their seats and flight attendants to please take position for takeoff. We would now like to bring in the first class party of tonight. Mr. and Mrs. Dana and Adam Warren. Ross, and I'm Captain Now Butler, <laughs> and we'll be piloting this event this evening. Thank you all for coming to my husband's birthday party. <laughs> Big shout out to Andrew Butler on his 33rd birthday. Woo! <laughs> this is the final boarding call for what I'm surprised is no passengers at the bar. We want everyone to stay in their seats. For all other passengers, please silence your electronic devices and note that smoking is prohibited while inside. <laughs> Welcome to flight 0916. We'd now like to introduce you to the party crew of this evening. First up, we have, you can stand when you hear your name, David Ross, brother-in-law of the groom, my husband, and likely the only fella in the room who can't put a worm on a hook. <laughs> Justin McGrath, brother of the bride. Justin was the only bayman on Adam's towny stag party that chartered a boat in town, and Justin was the only one who couldn't jig a fish. <laughs> then we have Jordan Walsh. <laughs> friend of the groom, and we're told this man can make a guitar with only two strings sound good, even when Adam tries to sing Rocky Road to Dublin. <laughs> Mark Power. Mark is the best man, friend of the groom. So Mark works with Adam at BMW. Mark will be outside doing vehicle appraisals starting at 9.30. So if you see him start staring at your vehicle, he's determining the trade value and not counting the change in your cup holder. <laughs> Once he gets that done, you better believe Adam will be out handing out BMW applications. Then we have the beautiful ladies of our flight. Amanda Ross, sister of the groom. <laughs> Apparently, Amanda was the good kid in the Warren household, having a subscription to National Geographic while Adam was stuck to his Nintendo. Just a second. Samantha Wade. 
friend of the bride, and if anyone notices her beer getting low during supper, please do us a favor on this flight and top her up. We promise the in-flight entertainment will be endless. Also, if you don't finish your table wine, feel free to lay it in front of her. She'll find it a good home, even if it is all 55 bottles. We don't waste here. Tracy Nash, friend of the bride. Tracy is a new mom. Cheers to her and her soon-to-be husband, Travis. <laughs> Little Annabelle came out, and her first noise she made was, hot dog. <laughs> Tracy is known to talk a lot, and we're pretty sure if we start slacking on the job tonight, she'll be up here trying to step in. <laughs> Danielle Lundergan. No, Danielle David. Sorry. Friend of the bride. And depending on who you're talking to in St. Bride's, they're cousins as well. Funny fact. I drove Danielle and Dana home one night from Tolls. <laughs> they were both so drunk that Dana got sick and Danielle cleaned it up because she thought it was hers. <laughs> and that's probably the most sensible of stories of their adventures. <laughs> Miranda McGraw, now butler, maid of honor and sister of the bride. Miranda recently married Andrew Butler, who Dana says used to have a birthday today, but from now on, it will be the Warren wedding anniversary. <laughs> And we also have our flower girls, Ellie and Kate. The cutest flower girls to come out of paradise. With that, we have some house rules for tonight. You're going to stand there. <laughs> the bathrooms are located in this direction. The laneway is shared. Please be mindful of other patrons as you walk to and from the bar. Please step to the right when someone is walking by with three drinks in hand. <laughs> You are reminded that this is a no smoking party. Smoking is, prohibit is not prohibited in the venue, including the laboratories. Please feel free to smoke outside where the receptacles are provided. Please make sure you take in time to take a picture and to sign the guest book. There are also BMW financing applications available <laughs> if you would like to sign that as well. In the unlikelihood of a long, boring speech, Please assume the position as demonstrated. <laughs> Please enjoy the table wine and ensure your glass remains full at all times during the night. And always fill your glass before anyone else at your table. By now, most of you may know that there is an open bar Feel free to give your money saved to the bride and groom or to your lovely night captains. The open bar is beer and liquor drinks only. Shots, coolers, and wine will be on your own. And please only get three at a time, as we don't want any wastage. In the event of any wastage, though, again, Sam is here to help. <laughs> The bar will be covered until midnight tonight, after which, please remember, when you're buying drinks that I like, Smirnoff Lights and Raspberry. Thank you. Go ahead. 
And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the new Mr. and Mrs. have turned on the fasten seatbelt sign, so you better buckle up because this night is about to take off. We will now invite my lovely Aunt Judy to come up and say grace before we enjoy our in-flight meals. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together on this happy occasion, joining Adam and Dana with their family and friends to celebrate the start of their long and joyous future. Let us pause for a moment to remember our loved ones who are no longer with us, but who are smiling from above. May we remember this day with joy and hope for the future and help Dana and Adam to learn from each other and grow stronger as both individuals and as a couple. And may the food we are about to eat bring strength to us all as we enjoy this time of celebration and love with family and friends. Amen. Hello, passengers. We now have some messages from people who missed their flight this evening. The first, the first message is from our uh, Aunt Val. And she says, congrats, Adam, to you and your beautiful bride as you start your life's, lives together as husband and wife. So sorry I couldn't make it as I am still in Halifax, but wanted so badly to be there. I know Uncle Terry will be there with you, and hopefully your DJ will play Sarah, LOL, as I am sure we can all relate to that song that he loved to have fun with. Once again, congratulations. Congratulations, Dana and Adam. Wish we could be there to help celebrate you today. I can't believe I'm in Alberta and there's an open bar. So make sure you do a few shots for me, bitches. Day, you always remind us to look your best, and I have no doubt you are stunning today. You have found a perfect match in Adam, but remember, Adam, when you marry one of us, it means you've married us all. So, good luck. Sending all of our love from Calgary, cheers to the new Mr. and Mrs. Love, Ren and John. This next one is from our Uncle Ern and Aunt Kay. Dana and Adam, sorry that we are unable to be there for your huge day. Congratulations to you both on finding each other. Here begins the most exciting adventure of your life. We just know that life has even more wonderful things in store for you than the joy you share today. May each and every day be beautiful and joyful for you as a couple. Love, Uncle Ern and Aunt Kay. Wishing you both a lifetime of happiness, love, and happily ever after. If we can offer some advice, never yell at each other unless the house is on fire compliment each other daily, hold hands in public, have a weekly date night, which I'm not sure that's going to be a trouble or not, but anyway, um, be each other's biggest supporter and make sure eat, make each other laugh every single day. Hope your day is everything you dreamt it would be. Have fun. I'm sure you both look stunning. Lots of love, Aaron and Justin Crant. And finally, from Gilly and Sarah. So like Adam Gill, I presume. Sorry we couldn't make the wedding, guys. Hope the, wed hope the day was a ball and can't wait for visits with the newlyweds. Congrats to you both and wishing you many years of happiness. Love, Gilly and Sarah. I'd also like to er let everyone know before we take a little moment while you finish your meals, um, that tea and coffee is available on the left-hand side there toward the bar if anyone would like to take advantage of that. 
Um, if you can't get up from your seat, I'm sure Kevin McGrath will be willing to help you. Thanks. Now to move on, we would like to bring Mark Power up to do his best man speech. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more people here than what I expected. How much for me owe to Sydney? Yeah. 50 bucks. Anybody got 100? I don't know. We all know what uh, Adam's like. He likes to exaggerate. So when he told me he was inviting 300 people, I was like, 50 people, this is going to be okay. <laughs> Uh, so we'll get into this. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, it's been a beautiful day, uh, especially with these folks on the bus. It's been great. Uh, I'm Mark. I'm Adam's best man. Uh, both Adam and myself have been in the car business uh, for a long time. We've known each other for probably 13 or 14 years. Uh, cleaning cars years ago at Penny Kia, and we, uh, we tried to start our own business after that, but uh, it didn't work out very good. <laughs> <laughs> So we stuck to working for other people. <laughs> um, over this time, there's been a few things I've learned about Adam. Uh, one thing I know is that he's always right. <laughs> Until he realizes that you're actually right, but he will be the guy that will come up to you and let you know that you are right. So it's all good. Uh, one thing that I do know about him as well is that he does like the finer things in life. So Dana, if there's a cheap option and an expensive option, just give him the cheap option. Uh, because if you give him the expensive option, he will pick it, and I'll, I will hear about it for the next six months. <laughs> uh, Dana, we all rely on our partners to keep us grounded. Uh, Adam sometimes gets his head stuck in the clouds. Um, of course, he is lag tall, as we all know. <laughs> I know. Seriously, though, you are the best deal that Adam has closed. Uh, so... Uh, you are now the in person to enjoy Adam's driving passion. Uh, big thing for Adam is that he get, takes care of everyone around him. Uh, he is a sincere person, and that, I do mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, marriage is, is a difficult thing, so make sure you guys take time to take care of each other and make time for each other. That's the most important thing. So you have yourself a good man there, Dana. That's the most important thing. Congratulations. <laughs> This pilot's children have just gone home. Woo! Woo! It's been a day. Okay. We would like to welcome up the maid of honor next for her speech. She is off duty for a second. Pilot duty, that is. Dana just said she has no boundaries, I think. But anyway, just give me a second. Hold on. These double as gangster glasses. This, this may not work out. Now, this is a story all about how Dana's life life turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute to stand right here to tell you all about the story of these love rides right here. Down in the gulch, born and raised, that's where Dana spent most of her days chasing sheep, drawing rotten pig rats, act not cool. She didn't give a mm, about doing good in school. Anyway, that's enough embarrassment for me tonight. 
Now to the real stuff. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Miranda, Dana's older and much wiser sister. Dana and I have had a very interesting relationship growing up. And as Johnny Power once said, we used to be twins. <laughs> Mom always dressed Dana and I alike. Same outfits and different colors, matching bows, matching shoes, but very, very, very different personalities. Dana was the rough one, known to damage a few things in her day, but would always apologize with a, but I didn't mean to. <laughs> Dana was the one that you could get going. Someone always wanted to poke a little harmless fun at, on Dana. She got put in a freezer a time or two. <laughs> She got lots of compliments on her fleecy sweaters by her favorite Uncle Francis. <laughs> oh, and the blue jogging pants, which I'm pretty sure Dana wore from grade three to grade six. Dana was the one to sit at the table and argue and cry for hours that she didn't want to do her homework. Any time that Dana would be asked to do something, she would respond with, one minute. <laughs> and <laughs> Dana was a pyro. She loved fire and basically just being up to badness. Mom was walking through the hall one day and started to smell smoke. <laughs> she was convinced the chimney was on fire. I told your father he needed to clean out that chimney. I knew this would happen. She starts going toward the phone. I'll call Stan to check. I gotta call the fire department. I should call the fire department. Out comes Dana out of the bathroom. It's not the chimney. <laughs> Mom still going mad thinking the house is going to burn down. <laughs> I was just burning something. <laughs> Dana was in, sat down on the bathroom counter with the window open, burning tissues with a lighter she just found. <laughs> no big deal. That was the day I learned about fire. <laughs> <laughs> As time went on, Dana and I went from we the weasels in the matching outfits to fighting because she took my clothes. Wherever Miranda went, Dana was there, which I always argued wasn't fair because I wasn't allowed out that late when I was her age. We'd argue about everything, and there's probably still a dent in the end of Mom's hall from pushing each other through it. <laughs> How many times would Dana get mad at me as we walked home from over the road? And I'd be ahead of her and she'd be yelling, wait for me. <laughs> but that phase did end and we both moved to town. That's where Dana really tried to be like me. <laughs> Instead of following me anywhere she'd go, <laughs> she went to full on identity theft. <laughs> I went to a specialist appointment in town one day, hauled out my wallet to give out my MCP card, and the only thing in it was my new debit card. Dana had gone downtown the night before, went into my wallet without telling me, took ID, MCP card, social insurance number, anything and everything that had my name on it went downtown that night. I, <laughs> I called her and she said, sure, you weren't using it. <laughs> When I sat down to think about what to write in this speech, I thought maybe I'd bring up some of Dana's best moments. Oh. Like the time she got her first speeding ticket oh, yeah. at 172 kilometers per hour. That's 172. Your car will be impounded now if you got caught doing that. She did make it to the news. 
or, not her name, by the way, not her name, just woman caught doing 172. <laughs> or about the time a woman in Mount Pearl picked up her phone on the sidewalk on her morning run. Or the time Dana thought it was a good idea to chop off her hair and cried because she looked like a soccer mom. <laughs> And then, there was the drug issue. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Dana worked on the Cape every summer during high school and early college. And she'd be out there for 8 in the morning until maybe 7 in the night. <laughs> I was home this day. And mom was pacing the house. <laughs> she's covering her face. She's embarrassed. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. She was going mad. Mom came at me like a lunatic around supper time, which is 4 p.m. in the gulch. <laughs> Dana does drugs. I know it. What is she doing? Me, being shocked and still a good sister, uh, well, I don't think so. <laughs> now, Dana probably tried weed at this point. I don't know, but I wasn't throwing her out under the bus at this point. <laughs> anyway, Mom stormed off and said, well, your father's going to have to deal with it anyway. <laughs> Dana strolls in the house. I think David and Francis were there. <laughs> And all you could see was mom's icy glare meet dad's eyes. He gets up and calls Dana in the room to confront her. Your mother found this in your pocket. Explain it. Holding a blue pill. Dana grabs it out of his hand and shoves it right in her mouth. Dad's shocked. She goes, it's an Excel mint and blows her bread at him. Mom was ready to bring it into the RCMP that day in placenta to get it drug tested. I almost wish she did. <laughs> so from then on, Dana was known to be hard on the Excelity. And we just found out tonight that Mark has them here tonight if anyone likes some drugs. <laughs> I have lots of stories on Dana, some she probably wouldn't appreciate me bringing up here tonight. <laughs> but that's because after all the fighting and yelling, Dana and I became best friends. Now don't get me wrong, we can still fight and yell, and Andrew and Adam will get very uncomfortable. But we'll end it, and two hours later, we'll pretend nothing's happened. I still remember finding out about Adam. Me, Dana, and Mom went to Moxie's for lunch one day. The whole time, Dana's obsessed with her phone, going mad, flipping it upside down so you can't see what's coming up on it. Anyway, Mom says, you must be texting a fella. And she said, no, just the girls. Anyway, later that night, Dana texts me. And this is the real text. So mom was correct. I may be seeing someone and they may be visiting sometimes, but I will give you a warning. Ha ha ha. And that was also my date to Boca. I sent a few questions and asked, is he nice or should I clean Andrew's gun up? <laughs> she said, no, he's super nice. If we go out somewhere, he comes to the door to get me opens his car door and the real selling point drives a 2020 BMW <laughs> the conversation goes on a bit and she says I just told him I told you he said I look forward to meeting her I'm sure she is great as you 
Hope you still feel that way. <laughs> so I asked, what's he like? And if he has a name, she said, he's sweet, but I also call him a C word. <laughs> and he doesn't have a name yet, but Tinker listens to him. <laughs> that must have been the last time Tinker listened to him anyway. I asked how they met, and Dana replies with, close your ears, mother. <laughs> met at an orgy, works at our pleasure. He has an assault charge and three kids. <laughs> but, but, Dana falling for Adam was no surprise to anyone. Adam is nice likes taking selfies, and loves dressing up and going out. Then, of course, the real reason Dana fell for Adam was he sells cars, fancy cars. Of course, Dana loves dri driving around in her fancy BMW, but Adam probably doesn't know how Dana always loved cars. She loved Mom and Dad's brand new dynasty so much when she was little, that she carved her name into the side of a, with a rock. <laughs> Dana McGraw. <laughs> so Adam, <laughs> while you may be out of praising vehicles, you better check that she's not looking at where she's carving Dana Warren <laughs> into the side of yours. I'm sure I could go on for hours about the bride today. Dana, your wedding was beautiful. Your dress is beautiful. Your bridal party is beautiful. Mm. Your husband, he's okay. <laughs> Adam, you do look great, though. <laughs> um, but is it very obvious that Dana is the prettiest of us here today? And I know that you can never be the prettiest at someone else's wedding, but I can certainly be the drunkest. <laughs> And if you'd all like to join me, let's have a little cheers to my little sister, the beautiful bride. Good evening, everybody. And, uh, First of all, I want to congratulate Mr. and Mrs. Warren, and I just got a few wor I got a few words to say, so bear with me. It's not going to be long speech, but it's only going to be a few words. <laughs> oh, there it is. So I remember a time when uh, Adam was a young gaffer. He came over to the house, my grandfather's house, grandmother's house. So he came over to the house and uh, so Dana, let's hope, how long are your fingernails, Dana? Are they long? Oh, they're going to have to be long because they're, he came over to the house, he was about, I don't know, 15, 16 years old and uh, he was getting all prettied up to go down to the snack bar, <laughs> you know, put on his aftershave and made sure everything was just so going down to the snack bar. So before he left the house, my poor old mother, his grandmother, said to him, Come here, Adam. She looked at her like, What do you want? She said, Come here. And then she beckons to me to my father, his grandfather, said, Go get the tape. Go get the tape. And he just looked at her like, What in the name of Jesus do she want the tape for? <laughs> so she went he went and got the tape for him anyway. He said, Come here, he said, now tape that onto your legs so you don't get in any trouble tonight. <laughs> so, uh, little, I got a little uh, poem for you guys to say. I got a, may you have the love that only two can know. May you go where only two, as one, may go. May the sun rise and set in your bounded in your bonded hearts, and the moon never finds you apart. May you cherish each other's dreams as your own, 
turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. May there be only no storms you cannot weather together. May your hearts know the repertoire of uncommon love. So, Mr. and Mrs. Adam Warren, I have something here for you. You know, that's a, it's a, it's a uh, I guess it was a, I don't know if it was a Keating tradition, a Warren tradition, or just a Catholic tradition. But when people get married, we have to have sculptures. Of the two people that are getting married, they have to commission them and uh, put them in the church. Now, I noticed today that um, I never seen them. I never seen them sculptures. So I was figuring that, you know, that maybe they wouldn't go ahead with that. So I took the liberty of getting them made. So you can have them for your church. There they are in the bags. Now, I know you're not supposed to open your gifts till tomorrow, but you're going to open them tonight. Right here, so I can get the bride and groom up here to have a yeah. open these up. So we'll see, you know, what they're all about. You know, like they're supposed to go into church. I know that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go into church. Well, you can't see what's in there. Yeah, but I'm not sure which is which now, so you're going to have to pick one because hers is yours and yours is hers. <laughs> oh, and another thing, another thing too, like, I got, came in here tonight, hey, this young woman, I don't know who she is, came up to me, she said, you, you're shooting off a gun, she said, you look pretty good in your, in your little bow tie shooting off the gun, you must be from St. John's, I said, no, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm not, a, I'm not a townie, not one bit, so, I'm not a townie, so anyway, I straightened her out on that one. <laughs> Bobbleheads. So uh, you got to show everybody, you know. That's your sculptures. That's your, that's your, sculpt, you. that's your sculptures for your chair for to put in the church. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Bring it back to the camper. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> you're welcome, buddy. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. No. There were many of hours on the phone well, I spent with that. <laughs> Put it on the beamer, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Dana, one thing more I got to say before I go. I heard you guys are going on a honeymoon on uh, Monday, is it? Yeah. You're going to Mexico somewhere. So, you know what a honeymoon is like, eh? I know, you probably don't because you've never on one before, but <laughs> at least I don't know anyway. But uh, you know what a honeymoon is like? <laughs> you got to answer me. Okay, yes. You do know what a honeymoon is like. What's it like? Find out on Monday. No, I can tell you what it's like. It's like a fall of snow. You never know how many inches you're going to get. You don't know how long it's going to last. <laughs> Attention passengers, we've been alerted by our flight marshal that we have had a security breach. We need our first class passengers to remove their shoes and answer some questions. Yes, please. <laughs> this is serious business. Like you've never seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Dana's first wedding. <laughs> 
Okay, let's get this started. For those of you who don't know how this works, the bride and groom will each hold a shoe of their own and one of the other's shoes. I ask questions, and whoever they think is the best answer for the question, they raise that shoe. The following segment of this reception may contain coarse language and references to subjects that are intended for adult audiences. Observer discretion is advised. This warning may make you more interested or may make you want to leave, but stick with us and let's have some fun together. So a little practice run here. In this moment, who needs to take a shot more? <laughs> Join in on that one. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. Cheers. Cheers. We're now flying intoxicated. <laughs> Woo. Okay, now that we know how that works and we're all warmed up, who was the first to say I love you? Her. He wrote it down? Oh my god. Who wears the pants in this relationship? Yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> Who's more likely to get a speeding ticket for 172 while listening to Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy? <laughs> Who spends more time staring at their phone? <laughs> Who does Tinker love most? <laughs> Didn't she bite Adam or something though? <laughs> Who is the bigger cry baby? <laughs> Who's more likely to max out their credit card? Adam. Oh. oh. <laughs> Who paid on the first date? Well, well, wait now. Hold on. Uh it's difficult to ask this question. I don't know if you know about the first date. It's kind of difficult to pay money to go to Topsail Beach <laughs> on bonfire night with a complete stranger that you met on the internet. <laughs> so now that I know she's a pyro, I thought all along Adam lit the fire. I gotta second guess that. I'm thinking Dana lit that fire on Topsail Beach. I took him out. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Who's messier? Oh, you go. Who is more likely to rob someone? <laughs> Who would last longer fishing with Kevin? <laughs> Who hogs most of the bed? Who has the wildest family? <laughs> Here's a big one. Who looks in the mirror more? <laughs> this is an important question for the Warren side of the family. Who's more likely, most likely, to bake a batch of bread? Yeah. I heard as much, Dana. I don't know if you intend on taking the Warren name, but y'all, we got some work to do. She can't cook, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And we might find this one out tonight, but who's the better dancer? Who's the better singer or who thinks they're the better singer? <laughs> who holds their liquor better? Oh. oh. <laughs> and Adam doesn't get drunk off beer, just so anyone knows. <laughs> Who spent the most nights on George Street? <laughs> Who would be most likely to get home from downtown and get locked outside their apartment after dropping off all their belongings inside the apartment first? <laughs> Who has the worst hangovers? And finally, who do you love the most in the world besides Tinker? <laughs> I'm going to keep it short. I just want to thank everyone for coming and uh, welcome Dana to the Warren to the Warren family. And with that, I'm going to pass everything over to my better half. He always said he would be my silent partner. So Monica, you and him make a great match. Kevin, we're fighting for it. But thanks, hon. Thanks. To your MCs tonight, seriously, wouldn't you just love to go on a flight with those gals? <laughs> awesome. And to Dana. Mm. Thanks for loving my boy. I know. There's an old saying, a daughter is a daughter for all of her life, and a son is a son till he takes a wife. But through the years, as I was always e-transferring Adam money, <laughs> that security question was always, who loves you the most? To this day, although it's not as often, it will always stay that way, Dana. I'll never fight you for that spot. I love him as a mom, and you can love him as a wife. And I'm going to give you from sage advice, speaking of the Warren clan. See, Ray and I eloped because there was a difference in religion. Holy Toledo. So, Mark, two things I'm going to share with you from both grandmothers. The first one I'm going to share from your grandmother, Warren. When I walked into her home after being on a honeymoon for two weeks, most of you probably don't even know this. I don't even know if you do. <laughs> the only thing she said to me was, well, you got him. So Dana, you got him. <laughs> I will further tell you that was the only off word the lady ever spoke to me. She threw her I learned how to allow a son to love a wife. Okay? So thanks, Nan. Now, my own mother looked at a beautiful bouncing baby boy and said, Oh, God help us, he's just like yourself. <laughs> as true as I'm standing here, that was her first words to me about Adam. And for many years, I thought, surely, God, this is the crisis she's talking about. But learning tonight that you married a pyro, <laughs> all I can say is, mother, go keep the rosary beads going. <laughs> but Dana, now you will love him as a wife, OK? So you guys truly <clears throat> have nothing else left to do now except live and love. 
On your table tonight is wine glasses from your mom and dad's wedding, who, when they were married, their wine glasses came from the gas station to Texaco station. <laughs> right? And, as I said, we eloped, but I did have a cake knife. So it was engraved for Amanda and Dave, and now it's engraved today for Adam and Dana. So you met prior to Snowmageddon, and you survived it. Monica, I hate to tell you, but he was up there for four or five days, girl. <laughs> My biggest concern when he came home is that he didn't leave his shorts on the floor. I got to be honest, because we were living in paradise, and so was Dana. But they survived Snowmageddon. Well, and then we know what came next. COVID came. Well, let's just say they survived a few floating bubbles. <laughs> Some of those bubbles drifted across the fence every now and then. But anyway, you created eventually your own bubble. One thing I got to say about that, I learned at their engagement party when Kevin said, Dana's not a hugger. <laughs> thought, well, excuse me. <laughs> I might know something you don't know, Skipper. Because <laughs> the first time I met Dana, and we weren't allowed to be hugging, she came up over the stairs, and the first thing the two of us did, so I don't know if that's because she really liked me at the time or thought she might, or she was just lonely because, you know, COVID was in effect, right? <laughs> but Kevin, she is a hugger. And, you know, back in our day, right, we got married, most of us did here, and then we had to figure it out. We're still here, most of us. You guys made it work first and then got married. So there's not too much else left for you to do. A few things. So Dana, I watched when Adam met you and he grew to become a different man all during COVID. And I remember your first Christmas, it was something like Monica's first lunch, where that text machine was going. Now, I don't know how they made it work out in St. Bride's, but they did. And I remember saying to Adam, sure, it was just as well if you had gone with her, because they never stopped. The thumbs were going the whole. <laughs> so I'm not a drinker, though I can, but I'm not. And Adam has always tried to, come on now, mother, have a drink with me. So we pulled an all-nighter. <laughs> just, just, just him and I. Just, just, just him and I. He probably drank more than I did. But halfway through the night, so he says, "Mother, how big is St. Bride's? It's a couple of thousand people." I said, "Well, now, Adam, it might have been, maybe in his day. I don't know, but I think it's something like down home. Like I don't know, it might be a couple hundred people. I don't know. I haven't been out there. Let's Google it. Of course." We learned it was 200 people at your last census, and the oldest person was 80-something when the census was done. So was Uncle Dave in the room? He didn't make it, but it's probably Uncle Dave is, is the oldest person. So anyway, he was quizzing me up and down. And the other thing that you don't know about Adam was he was always going to have, what was it, the Warren clan? A destination wedding. Well, sweet Jesus, could you have picked any better? <laughs> Seriously. So when we're going through COVID and they were talking about going down west and I'm telling you your, your grandmother's rosary beads did come out because I do remember how to say it. And I thought, just go to the shore, just go to the shore, just go to the shore. So finally he said, Mom, how do you feel about if Dana got married out home? I thought, thank Jesus. I said, my son, whatever Dana wants, Dana can get, right? <laughs> Because, you see, he grew up as, as a city slicker when we come down back home. A city slicker? You come from Pasadena. Right. I mean, the only, beach, the only beach you had was sand. Well, I don't know, but if any of you have been to Long Harbor lately, and I live next to the government wharf where the, the water washed in just as bad as it does down there in the Gulch, uh, there was no sand, okay? There was a trunk that went down. You know what was in that, and it wasn't sand. And then when he went to chapel, he went down in the beach over there. That's where Ray's from. And he had to climb the cliff to get down there, and that wasn't sand either. So 
We're really pleased that he got his destination wedding. I personally don't think he can do any better, and I haven't even partied out the shore yet. <laughs> so, although, um, Miranda, I do believe Aunt Anne might have a message for Dana and Adam tomorrow night that might, might come close to top of what you did. Okay, what you did. So, Dana was a secret. Our daughter was pregnant when COVID hit, and Dana was a secret, so those bubbles had to bounce pretty carefully, okay? When they bounced, because that was the time when nobody knew anything. So, after Snowmageddon, when he came home, I said, so Adam, how'd you do? I mean, you're going back again, so it couldn't have been too bad. He said, Mom, she sweeps the floor three times a day. <laughs> I thought to myself, I think he got a good woman. <laughs> I love it. I was, I was sold before I ever met her. Okay? I really, truly was. So, Dana, you're a good poker player, though. Yeah. She might have hugged me, Kevin. Okay? And I'll keep referring to you as you're the one who said it. But let me just say, she held her cards close to her chest. And I said to Adam one night, she don't let people in very quick, do she? No, he said, Mom, I don't think. I said, ah, that's all right. It's okay. Because you know the card she was holding? You're really the queen of hearts. Okay? So here we are with a new Mrs. Warren. And I couldn't be happier to have you into the family and I promise you this, I will never apologize for raising him as I did. Though I know he did have a hand, okay? I helped a little bit. You helped a little bit. He kept me grounded. He kept me grounded. But mark those lofty dreams. My mother was right. He is like his mother, okay? Because, yeah. So I promise to be a smother mother-in-law. And please God a smother nanma, and I'm not going to apologize for any of it. Don't. And the kick side to that is, I don't ever want you, Dana Marie, to apologize for the woman that you are. You don't have to be anything other than you. The same way that my mother-in-law gave me the chance. And should you wish to learn how to make bread, I too had to go home. I too had to go home and had to learn from my mother-in-law how to do it. So it's okay. You're gonna be just fine. But honey, in closing, in closing, cause you see Kevin, I got the gift of gab too. I can see your papers down there. So hang on, hang on. I promise I'm not running for politics in the area, okay? I just want us to be the grandmother. So in closing, Adam, I want you to know that we couldn't be happier for you. We truly couldn't. And I want you to remember this. As your song goes, it's the loving touch that means so much more than the diamonds and rings that we adore. Always hold one another dear, especially when no one is watching. See, we can all pretend in public, but what's important is what's going to happen on the day when you walk across the floor, like we had to, when things weren't going so well, and you will realize when you each reach for one another that you feel safe. And that's the greatest wish I could wish for both of you. Thank you, Monica and Kevin, for raising her like you did. And like the priest said today, you really do feel your love. So all I can say to you is hang on to it. Don't change a thing. We love you both. I'm going to be like the flower girls. They're just going to wave. <laughs>
be like Roy. Thank you, Moran. Uh, Phil and Ray, you kind of filled me up with the words a little bit. <laughs> uh, but uh, I have to say, the way you spoke about Dana, that when I, I see Dana, every time she sees the two of you, she lights up the same way. It brings life to her. Thank you very much. Now, uh, good evening, folks. We would like to give a very warm welcome to you all here this evening for coming to share in this special celebration of Dana and Adam. And as we, me and Manager, invite Adam and his family, Ray and Phil, and Amanda and her family into her family. Uh, you mentioned about the glasses there. Yes, we were thinking about the same thing on the way in. Uh, when we got married 33 years ago, Harold Tobin and Joan come in ahead of us, and they drove us. Th that's who drove us to our wedding. And uh, I see Keith Brown there. He toasted us at our wedding. And, uh, but there's some changes, because we noticed uh, that time uh, the wife was trying to get a hope chest to try to get a few dish towels or something like that to put in. <laughs> and, and, and now they're looking for wine chests. <laughs> so it's totally different altogether. And uh, that time, uh, all you had to do was stand up out on the dance floor and they come and they'd pay money for you to go dance with you. <laughs> they, they used to call it the dollar dance. Yeah, yeah. and that's what we paid for our band with that night, was the dollar dance. <laughs> We're counting out two dollars and one dollar bills yep. to pay the band, four hundred dollars. And we'd uh, also like to recognize Mrs. Rose Foley, uh, Dana's nanny here tonight. She's here with us again. It's nice that she's able to celebrate with us. And uh, I don't want to take no thank yous away from the Dana and Adam, but we have to recognize uh, the Star Hall here this evening uh, through talking to him because uh, Dana and Adam were in town, that and Ray and Phil were in town, and we did a little bit of talking to them back and forth about the plates and that kind of stuff. And uh, they're very appreciative of, well, we're very appreciative of the way they dealt with us. From uh, Betty Leonard and the ladies auxiliary uh, to the bartenders and even the, the manager of the bar. We can't say enough from them. They're very, very nice. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I said about recognizing Dana's uh, grandmother, but we'd also like to recognize uh, someone else. Uh, but he was up for speaking, Adam's Uncle Bill. See, it was a nice while since he was home, and it's nice for him to come home to the wedding and that. So I says to Adam, I said, uh, will you recognize Bill now when you see him? And Adam says, God, boy, I don't know. He's been gone a while. He probably changed a bit. So I then says to Adam, do you think Bill will recognize you when he sees you? And Adam says, Jesus, yes, for sure, I never went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so for some of you that never heard this before, you're going to, that did hear this before, you're going to have to bear with us. But Tobin told me one time, Harold Tobin, there's only 15% of the audience here's what you have to say, so <laughs> we'll try it. Uh, we are Kevin and Monica McGraw, like I said, from St. Brides, and uh, we have three children, Miranda, the oldest, and uh, Dana, the bride, the middle child, and Justin, the youngest. So uh, there a few years ago, we, Monica says to me, Kevin, we're getting a bit older, and it looks like we're not going to have no grandchildren because the kids have no partners. <laughs> so we puts it out there that whoever marries our kids, we will give them two lambs. <laughs> and uh, someone must have put it on Facebook or something because uh, within a few months, the two girls were engaged and the girl come and took Justin. And now, and now it looks like we're going to have a lot of babies because they're all living in Conception Bay. <laughs> now, having Dana as a kid and a middle child has been very interesting. 
Then I kind of always wanted to be in control and that kind of stuff. Like if you were going on a bike or a skidoo or something, Dana wanted to be the driver. If you were going out in the car, Dana would run through the door first and say shotgun to get out by the window <laughs> and uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, when Dana was uh, very young, we used to call her a shadow, you know, because whatever you be at outdoors and that, she wanted to be involved in it, she wanted to be around you and wanted to be at it. And, uh, but one of the hardest days we had in our life was uh, one day we brought Dana to Cornerbrook to go to school. We hated to leave her there. Uh, she was staying in a boarding house there at the time with two or three other people. And uh, she told us to go on, and she made great friends there, and it worked out best kind. She spent two years there after that. And uh, there's also some funny moments now with Dana. Like when Dana was a kid over by the shop one evening, uh, a tourist asked her, how do you get to Cape St. Mary's? And Dana says, in the car, buddy, with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then just the summer downtown one night, Dana walks into a bar, and uh, they must know pretty good. Because the bartender says, Dana, what are you at here tonight? She says, I'm looking for a man. He says, Dana, I thought you already had a man. I thought you were getting married to fall. She said, yes, buddy, that's the man I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first clue that we got that there was an Adam on the scene, uh, Dana calls home one evening and says, like Ray and Phil said, about meeting this handsome fella down on Topsail Beach one evening. And uh, next thing we hear is about the candlelight dinner they had. Now, it sounds very impressive, don't it, yes? But it turns out that it was Sean Snowmageddon, and he had to hotten a tomato soup over a candle to keep warm. <laughs> Power was gone. And then comes the first time Dana comes, uh, Adam comes out home. He's sitting there very uncomfortable. So Dana mixes him up a drink, and she says, get that down, India, you know, and you'll be the best kind. Then she gets him a drink of old Sam, and she says, uh, now drink that up, and you'll fit right in. You'll be the best kind. About two hours after, she's there hitting him on the back. Get it up, get it up, throw it up over you, and you'll be the best kind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... So a few days goes on, you know, it's the way things get twisted and talked about out on the shore and that. <laughs> so we wax into Dana's grandmother's one evening, Miss Rose Foley, and uh, she's there on the phone. She says, but that's an awful fella Dana has, ain't it? <laughs> he, li he lives in the lamb wash. He, he drinks tomato soup for his dinner, and he drinks liquor until he throws it up. But in, in reality, uh, Adam is a fine young man who shows a lot of love and respect for his family and Dana. And uh, we would like to thank his parents, Phil and Ray, for raising a fine young man. Turned out the way he is. And uh, we'll be very proud to call him our son-in-law. And just a little bit of advice now for Dana and Adam this evening. Whatever you do, always try to give it 100%. And always have time for each other and family. Make lots of friends along the way. And it's like we said to Miranda and Andrew, that we cannot make it in this world alone. We need family and friends. And I'm sure that Ray and Phil can relate to the same. Because wherever we look here this evening, we can see a face of, some, of someone that helped us along the way. And we are very thankful for that. Thank you all very much. And just by showing up even, it makes the separate celebration go off that much smoother, you know, just by having your presence there. Thank you once again. Now, we m uh, Every time there is a wedding on the go, there's always this one wedding in particular that we think of. You know, it comes up. It was happened a long time ago. It's the wedding of Patty and Doreen Barry. <laughs> so when Patty was a young fella, 
He used to fish with his father out to the Perch Rock all the time. And that's where they always had their gear, their nets and their trawls, and that's where they did their, a lot of fishing. And uh, so the night Paddy got married, there was a storm coming up. And uh, Paddy was there lying in the bed on his back, not saying very much. And Doreen said to him, uh, Paddy boy, there's something wrong with you. What's on your mind? And uh, Paddy says, yes, honey girl, I'm going to have to tell you. I'm thinking about me gear to the perch rack. <laughs> <laughs> and Doreen says, I knew it was summer because I don't see much of it here tonight. <laughs> now, uh, we're planning a little uh, party after party, as they call it, on shore tomorrow evening. And uh, we're having a little supper and that around 7 o'clock and might have a bit of pig or lamb or... And if the branch lads come through, we might have some fresh moose. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> but there's a, there's a little story anyhow about uh, tangled up between branch and some brides. There were a couple of years ago, we see a big influx of people moving over some brides. And within two years, there was about 10 house, houses closed up in Sabrides, true. But at the same time, in the neighboring community of Branch, we see about 10 houses starting up. So uh, people got worried, you know, what was on the go, and they checked it out. And all that they could come up with, two years ago, the liquor store closed in Sabrides. <laughs> and two years ago, they opened the liquor store in Branch. Uh, like we said before, uh, today is a very special day for Dana and Adam as they made their vows to celebrate the rest of their lives together. And we wish them nothing but happiness from here on in and that may the light of God always shine upon them. And uh, we would like for you to raise your glass. Now stand and raise your glass as we welcome Phil and Ray and his family into our family. Thank you. All right, thank you for flying with Warren. No, sorry, thank you. From the couple is next. Yep. I am, I've had some wine. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're now going to invite uh, Adam and uh, Dana to come up and say their thank yous. It's okay. Hello! Okay, so I'm just going to be completely honest. <laughs> we didn't write a speech. <laughs> and Adam said to me that he's not going to talk until the end. So I'm just, I'm just going to fluke it. But I will still be better than Miranda at her wedding. Um, so... Uh, thank you all for coming, firstly. Uh, we do know that a lot of you guys did take off work. It is Friday. Um, it's probably not really ideal for most of you to have a wedding on a Friday, but we really need to have the after party on Saturday, so you're all going to have to get over it. But thank you all for coming. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you all. Um, thanks to the many vendors that we did have to take and make our big day the day we had. Um, we actually didn't do much, only like send e-transfers <laughs> and tell people that we didn't really care. So it, <laughs> it was all worked out at the end, but they were all great. Um, so that would have been like Mount Pearl Florist done our flowers, which we absolutely love. Um, they do do a lot of work for us often. And if anybody's ever looking for flowers, Mount Pearl Florist is the way to go. Um, we also thank Celtic Knot Decorating, who did do the decor here tonight. Thank you so much. Um, Colorful Creation did do our wonderful cake here to the left on the airplane. Um, thank you to Joss, who did get us our wedding cake today. Joss, I'm going to make you stand up because I'm like that. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> And she won't do it. Um, anyway, 
Thank you. Um, we would also like to thank our photographer today who did spend a lot of time in the wind uh, with wind-blown hair, uh, Terry Day Photography. He is <laughs> putting his hand through his hair just there to the left. We'd also like to thank uh, Brady Huckster Films for capturing our big day. He also did my sister's day earlier this summer. Thank you, Brady. Um, and... Oh, of course, our wedding party. Thank you guys for being there with us the whole way, uh, especially if I was probably freaking out about something stupid. Uh, but thank you. We really appreciate it. And you all look really beautiful tonight. And thank you for staying somewhat sober on the bus. Thank you. <laughs> um, we would also like to thank, of course, our parents. We would not be here today, only for both of our parents. Um, I probably don't know where I would be today, only for my parents. Um, but thank you guys. Your support and guidance have gotten us here today to where we actually want to be in life. And that does mean a lot to both of us. Uh, thanks to Fahrenheit ahead of time. They are going to be our band here this evening. Um, so we do have a sound engineer as well, which is Mark, Str Mark Strong uh, for and they did drag all of their equipment out here to Placentia as well for all of us to have a good time here tonight. So if you are not dancing, please think about dancing and take advantage of their hard work as well. Um, and in closing, be sure to take advantage of the booze, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you really want me to. We have no worries about Jeff doing that. He will be seen naked on the dance floor around 1 a.m. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Thank you to everyone and anyone that we did miss. It was a complete oversight, and it was not our fault because we really did appreciate everyone who had a part to take in our day today. Thank you. And now Adam... Oh, has his one line. Okay. Hold on, I gotta read it. <laughs> Don't drink and drive, or do anything stupid. And if you can't find anywhere to sleep, I hear the drunk take serves Harold Hotel breakfast in the morning. So, you got that. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. Good to see all your faces. Thank you. Passengers, thank you for flying with Warren Airlines, flight 0916. We'd now like to take a message from our first class. Oh, I was supposed to read that. See, it did make sense. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. It, did make sense. it did make sense there because Mr. and Mrs. Warren have spoken. See, we were confused because of the Mrs. Warren bit because we're not used to that. Still sounds like my mom, so I got to get over that. But passengers, we've reached our final destination. Woo! Thanks for flying through the night with us, and upon your arrival, you will find drinks to be cold and music by Fahrenheit to bring some heat. If you're not already headed to the bar, please feel free to congregate in that area so we can get the tables cleared and the dance floor ready quicker. And do you want to read? Yeah, sure. The cake cutting, we're going to begin. Um, we'll have the photographer join Dana and Adam at the cake for some pictures. Although he may not be needed because Dana and Adam will be doing selfies anyway. <laughs> Let's party. Woo, thank you. Attention, please. We'd like to now invite Adam and Dana out for their first official dance as husband and wife. You can bump it up a little. You need? Right there, guys. Yeah.
Here we go. 